Hello Eurovision lovers, I am here today and joined today by the wonderful, amazing Maltese singer Ira Lasco. Hello everyone. So I'm, I'm so happy and delighted to be chatting to you today and of course all Eurovision fans out there will know that you took part in 2002 Eurovision and also 2016. What was that That's like right. for you? 2002 was pretty new to me because I'd only ever watched Eurovision as a child and I supported all my, you know, now they are my colleagues, now they're my, you know, fellow fellow singers. Um, at the time, I was a child watching other singers participate for Malta and always, you know, hoping that Malta would reach the top three at least, you know. Um, and it happened twice when I was a child because it happened with Mary Spiteri and it happened again with Chiara. And I remember, you know, always kind of wishing that I would one day be on the stage at the Eurovision Song Contest. Little did I know that at 20 I would be there and I would actually almost win it. You know, for me it was a dream come true because, you know, people really thought that we would win it in Malta that yeah. year. Yeah. And um, I came back, Ron kind of welcomed me like a hero. So, and obviously then a very fruitful career, you know, followed after that. So I'm very thankful to the Eurovision Song Contest and I'm very thankful to that experience because it opened doors for me and um, and I, I never stopped, you know, throughout these past 20 years, I mean, I've collaborated with international stars and I've recorded about nine albums, I think. And wow. it's a lot of work, you know, considering mm. I'm from a tiny island called Malta, which gets overlooked many a time. It's, you know, it's impressive how much we managed myself and, and my management, you know, how much we mm -hmm. managed to cram into the past 20 years. 2016 was obviously slightly different because mm -hmm. the festival had grown, you know, in magnitude. I mean, first of all, I'm very thankful to have participated in the festival that was happening in Sweden. You could say Stockholm is the mecca of Eurovision, you know, so mm -hmm. France yeah. really stepped up the game. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I loved my song, Walk on Water, but there were many other very, very strong contenders that year. I mean, it was like, you listen to a song, you forget the other. You listen to a song, you forget the other. There were also yeah. songs that might not Very have strong. been like, you know, oh, I don't really like this song on a first listen, but then on second and third oh, yeah. listen, there might have been songs that were, that became Eurovision favorites, you know, Eurovision fan favorites. Yeah. Um, yeah. One which comes to mind, for example, was the Austrian entry, which was by, by Zoe. Zoe. I think. Yeah. Wasn't my kind of song. Wasn't my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Eurovision fans went crazy for it. I mean, it, it didn't it fare did. that well in the competition. Mm -hmm. But some songs remain fan favorites. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. So sometimes it's not where you rank either. It's kind of what memory you've given the Eurovision fans. Yeah, I mean, course. in yeah. 2002, I remember, you know, people still remember the, the moment where I blew glitter into the camera. <laughs> well, I was going to mention that. <laughs> people were like, what's going to happen? And then yeah. it happened and everyone was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and so just very memorable, you know, in yeah. Eurovision. Because I remember being a part of um, a Eurovision fans forum. And I remember uh -huh. all of the Maltese fans were convinced that Malta was going to win. Every year they're convinced we're going to win. Every single year. Where, <laughs> so, do, you, where, do, where do you think? <laughs> you're not, do you? you're not, why am I not surprised? <laughs> where do you, we're where do you think? So everything that yeah. we take part in, you know, we feel like we're the center of the universe. We're very much <laughs> like the Spanish and the Italian. Okay. The Italian. Um, yeah. You know, but the Italians, Italy was an empire once, so. <laughs> so they can and they have like the right to you know <laughs> um, but no I, I think it's just very mediterranean you know we're very hot-blooded we're very passionate about everything so yeah you know when we take part in something or when we do something it's like the biggest thing on earth look malta had a couple of chances i'm sure more than a couple of chances to be yeah. contenders strong contenders yeah. for the crown but then there were other times when they just weren't going to be contenders. I've created a video on my YouTube channel with who countries I think are going to win 
over the next five years. And I think Malta is going to be one of those. But why do you think Malta hasn't won yet? I think in my year, in 2002, there was still mm -hmm. the jury vote. So that somehow mm -hmm. sometimes kind of messes about things. Um, but I mean, there was a televote as well. And I did mm -hmm. very well in the televote. Mm -hmm. I was only 12 points away, really. Exactly. Ironically, I think if I had, if we had tied, Latvia would have still won because they had more consecutive 12s, I think. Well, that would have hurt even more. <laughs> if we tied and then it was snatched away from us like that, I'm telling you, oh, we'd no. never have lived it down. It been a riot. Me, but... <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I think maybe the stars haven't aligned for Malta yet. You know, I know it sounds a bit naff, but I think I think it's it's also down to the size of our country as well. Do get the votes in when the act and the song is good and people actually vote for us. But when you consider the fact that there are 42 entries, that's a lot, a lot of countries, a lot of countries. It's very, very hard, first of all, to get into the final, which we haven't managed all the time. Um, when, and, and when we've managed then, it's hard to get the attention of public, you know. I mean, this year, um, I thought Destiny fared very well. She reached the top 10. I think the last time we got into top 10 was with Gianluca back in Malmo. Um, so I think, you know, that's the reason because the songs are, I can't say the songs have ever been absolutely terrible. There have been songs I obviously didn't think were amazing but mm -hmm. i never thought oh my god this song is so crap like it's gonna be lost you yeah. know mm -hmm. so i don't know i think it's it's that you know it's, i blame it on diaspora <laughs> i i really you mentioned destiny there and i love that song i do and I, i'll be honest i just want i'd like to know what you think about what i'm gonna say here but um, okay. i i feel like watching her performance was awesome but I feel mm -hmm. when it came to the final, it was almost like, oh my God, I need to win, I need to win. I think that came across, um, you know, somewhat. Maybe I'm wrong, I, yeah. I don't know. But, but I don't know, I mean, the pressure mm. that people put on her and the, it's a lot. look, the way it was politicized in our country made me sick to my stomach. I am, okay. I'm sick of, of, of things being politicized in my country, of, you know, you, you, it's like art has to be politicized and, and mm. uh, the, the, the Eurovision participation. Um, and I think that that takes away a lot from the pleasure and the fun of it. it all. I mean, back in 2002, I was 20 years old. I really didn't give two hoots about <laughs> where I would end up in the competition. Yeah. I yeah. remember the only time I felt a bit, you know, a bit like queasy, whatever, was when I got into the green room after my yeah. performance, I knew that the voting was up. Then yes, I said, oh my God, they're either going to crucify me back home or they're going to celebrate me. And thankfully it was the second one. If I'm going to place last or even 15th, whatever, 13th, it wasn't going to be good enough for the right. most people. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot of pressure. This time round, when I went in 2016, obviously yeah. I had a lot to live up to because there was a lot mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time. I told myself, you know, it's a song festival. Um, you know, we're here flying our flag for our country. Um, I've been given a really good song and I've, I've, um, I've been invited to co-write on it as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just here doing my thing. I'm being a professional, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm asked, I, I was chosen by the Maltese people to be a pro, to get on stage and to do my job, because this is my job, it's my profession as well. So, you know, Destiny was also um chosen to do that and she is a professional at such a young age mm -hmm. as well which is, mm -hmm. you know i'm 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 very proud of her because um at such a young age to be so pro it's mm -hmm. you know it's quite mm -hmm. impressive it was uh it was politicized so she she was under so much pressure again she is also the type of person i believe that you know will not take like second best which okay. is great because when you're an artist mm -hmm. and you're in the recording studio every take has to be a killer take you know the best ever so so i'm sure that yes that was weighing on her mind you know but but i'm sure also that 
she 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 enjoys herself so much on stage that it really shines through unfortunately because malta was always ranking so high yeah. from the very beginning even yes, from the was. year before when she mm-hmm. had the other mm-hmm. song yeah. people will just like sometimes it's better to be the underdog because mm. when the, you're the underdog no one expects or, or to be the dark horse that's what happened yeah. to me in 2002. everyone's yeah. like oh the song is crap the lyrics are so babyish, you know, it's like a baby song, blah, blah, blah. And then like, you know, Malta's the dark horse. And sure enough, that's what mm. happened. So- it must be wonderful for you to experience that, to go to Estonia, you know, perform your song as the underdog, and then to walk down the catwalk when you had your moment, you know, whenever <laughs> you do it, you walk down the catwalk <laughs> and like, that takes uh-huh. a lot of courage, of course. So, I mean- No, I love it's, this. It's such an achievement to the come side. Yes, yes. Of course, I was, you know, um, all my life I was, I mean, ever since I was a little girl, it was Mm -hmm. everything I've ever dreamed of, you know, to be on stage and to be performing. Mm -hmm. I obviously Mm -hmm. had that as a target in mind at that time. And after I achieved that, it was like, okay, what's next? What am I going to do? You know, (laughs) Uh, kind of stars in my eyes, you know, the world is my oyster. And it's, it's it's good to be like that. And it excites me to see like, Having seen Destiny's charting her course during the X Factor reminded me a lot of that. Yeah, so of yes, yes. I mean, it is a, it's an experience that I will treasure for the rest of my life. The one back in 2002, mm. even the one in 2016. But 2002, I was so naive, you know, I had just literally started. So young. And, and you're involved in X Factor Malta now. Did that select the artist for your version? Not that anymore still... now, not, not anymore. anymore. Okay. They okay. did for two years. Um, okay. Now the selection has been removed. So okay. now there's the 50,000 50, euro prize mm-hmm. for grabs, which is, uh, which is very exciting. Given our categories, but I can't say which category I've okay. got. I had girls and boys. So I think... Hmm. You, yeah. you might guess what I might have. Well, this year, it's not connected to, Eurovi- to the Eurovision, which I think is a good move because I do believe that before people voted with parameters in their okay. minds. Mm-hmm. So they wouldn't vote for, for example, I don't know, maybe an older person because they felt that, oh no, you know, and I think that's a bit ageist as well. Obviously now, you know, have being 40 years old, um, I do feel the the ageism. It really, really annoys me. You know, mm-hmm. it it angers me to to read some comments. Mind you, there there aren't many, but when there are those few, you know, about like, oh, you know, scoot over, make space for the rest. If if you're a lawyer by profession, no one's gonna go. Oh, okay, time's up. Forty yeah. years old. You don't look good yeah. anymore. Out of the yeah. courtroom. You know, you're a storyteller, so you've still got more stories to tell. Life doesn't end uh, by a certain (laughs) age actually it gets even better you become a more seasoned musician so people should should be excited to listen to your stuff more more than ever what you can say and what others can say is you know what yeah say whatever you want about me um age or whatever but this is my record you've written and collaborated with so many big people Mm -hmm. and big names you know and you're uh, a star in your own right yeah no for sure i mean the industry can be very cruel and it can be cruel to people because of the way they look or because of their race or because of their age um, or because of anything really. But mm-hmm. I think it's really important that that artists do get their voices heard as well. It's not only about being the best vocalist around. It's not about writing the best songs either, but it's also about putting a message out there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm very, very adamant about it. I'm yeah. passionate about the LGBTIQ community. Don't ask me mm-hmm. how or why. If I really sit and think, I can possibly remember the, the, mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. when I said, you know what? Mm-hmm. This is why I feel so strongly about it. This is why I, mm-hmm. I empathize with the community. I do believe that musicians and the artists should should make their voices heard. And this community loves you for it. And I think I've just had a, a sample there of the multi-spirit and the Mediterranean vibe that you were chatting, <laughs> chatting about at the beginning there. <laughs> yes, <Love> indeed. <laughs> Obviously, you're judging on X Factor category we can't name, but yeah, no, no, I think. Um, so what's next for Ira? I'm going to be busy with the X Factor, but I do have some videos up for release. I have a lyric video up for release 
for with the song um, that some people might know. If they have my deluxe double album, and uh, I've got another song coming out as well. And then I'll probably be releasing a very new track um, very soon. I don't have any time frames because mm-hmm. of COVID. You know, everything is a mm. bit like floaty. Sure. Um, sure. But you know, that's happening. I also have a performance coming up on the 10th of September, which is very soon. Very selective, um, very exclusive for 100 people only, uh, because wow. we're only allowed 100 people standing right now in Malta. Mm-hmm. And hopefully some more performances, you know, because COVID has really hit us hard here, has really hit the the, yeah, yeah. the entertainment industry very hard in Malta. I was speaking to Anna Celine recently, you know, for who represents yes. Estonia, the same year as you, you yes, were there. Yes. And yes. she she would love on her 20th anniversary for next year to go back and represent Estonia. Is there any such plan for everyone else to come back? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I, I swear. Sometimes uh, my management and I receive emails uh, by yeah. like different songwriters or people yeah. from different countries, you know, asking yeah. about this interest or whatever. I mean, obviously the Eurovision Song Contest is firstly a lot of fun. Secondly, it's a huge, you know, amazing platform to be to be in, um, to be on, and um, uh, and it's a huge stage, and it's always, always such a professional show, and it's always growing, you know, it's always becoming more popular with with fans of all ages and from all different genres now of music. Before it was a bit schlager for some people, but now it's actually become cool for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's always something that really interests me. So I never say never, but oh, I also... Oh. <laughs> but I never. also... <laughs> never say never, <laughs> she says. I, I would just like to say to you, Ira, um, it's been absolutely amazing chatting to you. It's been great. It's been like an eighth wonder. For me <laughs> to be chatting, <laughs> to be chatting to you. So I really thank you so much. It's been lovely chatting to you too. Um.